right, welcome to the NOVA Conservation Commission meeting on July 29th, 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're gonna have a recording announcement here. If anyone is recording that we're not aware of, please let us know now and we'll do a roll call. Uh, as typical, I will just go through the list of attendees and ask you to confirm your presence. Uh, Chris Capizia. Here. Peter Bamber. Here. John Gear. Here. And Stephen Washburn is present. All right, first up on the agenda tonight, we have request uh, for a certificate of compliance at 33 Puritan Place. Um, Ramanda, what do we have on this tonight? Uh, maybe we should make some type of uh, announcement or make the committee uh, commission aware that uh, you're standing in for the agent tonight, Ramanda? Yes, so I am standing in for the agent. Um, we do have an agent that will be starting soon, but obviously not soon enough. So it's been an adventure doing some field work, but um, it is what it is. Um, so this is one of the properties that was um, that was developed in a large subdivision, and it's the developer never came back to have the lots released. So as people are selling off their homes, they're finding that they still have open orders of conditions on their property. So this is um, why they're asking for a full certificate. What we do is we actually offer a partial certificate if they want to release their lot. So this is one of the lots that falls under that. So they did provide the request, they fill up the state form, and they also provided the um, plot plan to show that their house and their lot was developed as it was supposed to. All right, thank you. Yeah, I reviewed this earlier. I'm taking another look now. Do we have any uh, questions or comments from the commissioners? No, I can make a motion if you'd like. All right. Make a, make a motion to issue a partial certificate. I'll second that. All right. Uh, all those in favor, I'll go down the list as typical. Just have eight your position. Chris Capizia. Aye. Peter Bamber. Aye. John Gear. Aye. Steve Washburn votes aye. Thank you for that. Um, next up on our agenda, we've got Conservation Commission business, uh, Ellis Pond, Haas Pool Pond uh, treatment proposals that uh, look to be from, is it Solitude? Is that how you say it, Ramanda? Or is that Solitude with that uh, accent over the O? Uh, I've got them both ways, Steve. <laughs> I'm going Solitude. Okay, I like it. <laughs> and uh, what do we have for information on this, uh, Ramanda? Yeah, so this is the company we've been using to do um, the chemical treatments at Ellis Pond for the uh, water chestnuts. Obviously, hand pulling and dredging is not an option right now still. So while we have seen a lot of improvement, um, you know, obviously, as you clear back some of the, um, you know, water chestnuts, the ones that are lying dormant, as they can lie dormant for up to 10 years, are now getting a lot of sun and they're growing back. So we want to try to keep the treatments going so that we obviously can try to, you know, keep it under control. So this is for um, this season. Um, so they will start the process of the chemical treatments. They will do a report at the end of the year. Um, so, you know, basically that's what it is. So this is for the Haas Pool Pond as well as Ellis Pond. And, and they do two treatments and they, uh, I believe, each, and they have done a monthly will be out for yeah. uh, April through, what is it, September or something? Yeah, so they're going to start now. Um, obviously, everything has been a little bit delayed, um, mm -hmm. but they would start right away. So they do send us um, an update before they go out so that um, the agent will be able to meet out, you know, at the site um, to see what they're doing. So they alert us to every time they're going to be out there. Uh, so we can, you know, a member can go and, and you know, see, sorry, it's my dogs, <laughs> or, um, you know, the agent can go meet them. Um, and it does require some time to the pond level to be lowered or raised, depending on what chemical treatment they're doing. Um, but they always are pretty good at working with the DPW to make sure that gets done. And they post all the appropriate signs around the ponds. Yeah. Sounds so like we've had a very positive experience with them in the past. It seems like a good move to just proceed with them uh, again, right? 
Yeah, so um, you would have to just, um, if you do want to approve it, just make a motion to have it signed. Um, that's what you're authorizing the contract to be to be signed and, and submitted back to Solitude so they can start the work. I make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, as typical, I'm going to go right down the list and ask for you to voice your position. Chris Capizia. Oh, you mute it. You mute it, Chris. <laughs> I said it five times. Hi. Hi. Favor. Thank you, Chris. Peter Bamber. Aye. John Gear. Aye. Steve Washburn is also in favor. Uh, next up, CPC nomination. Um, so, Ramonda, maybe you can outline the responsibilities of the CPC representative from CONCOM and tell us a little bit about what the requirements of the position are meeting-wise and contribution. All right. So, right now, you actually, um, your board's going to be um, constituted with uh, three new members soon. So, this is not something you have to take action on tonight. So, you can think about it and wait and probably discuss it with the three other new members once they're onboarded. But what it is, is this member would act as the representative for conservation when it comes to matters of um, different type of um, programs and uh, applications that come before the Community Preservation Committee, um, obviously, so they could allocate CPA funds to it. So this person would be uh, part of the, the uh, team that goes over new applications, as well as our representative if we want to bring an application forward for a project for ourselves. Um, so it is a commitment. Um, they do, I believe, meet twice a month. Um, so it would be basically sitting on a whole other board. Um, it does get a little bit, um, into the weeds when it comes to um, the finances, because basically what you're doing is you're overseeing the CPA money. Um, so, like I said, you, you don't have to take any action on it tonight. Um, this can be something that we can discuss at a later time when the other members are available, because there may be somebody else who has experience with it already, or is more eager to take on another more active role in another, another committee. So it's really up to you guys what you want to do tonight. So you can just table this to the next meeting or table it to later in the um, year. Um, it's really up to you. I, I have like to make a motion, motion to table it. Well, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> unless somebody's really eager, let's table this. <laughs> yeah, I would say that um, just being transparent with my thoughts and feelings, I would probably be hesitant uh, to push someone that was new to the commission onto a second uh, committee. Um, given that I believe all three new members are not actively involved in town government currently. But with that being said, I think I would still very much like them to be involved in the decision-making uh, process. And if someone does really feel that they're up to snuff and wants to want to roll up their sleeves and go in on it, that would be cool. So I, I would love a motion to table this until we get them on board, but just thought to share some of my considerations surrounding that with you guys. Um, I have a question. It, now, is there this position can be co-opted between two members no no it has to be the one member okay. all right well that's that's helpful thank you <laughs> yeah it'd be nice to share um because it is a lot of work so that's what I said maybe the other members we don't know you know they may really have an interest in it because i mean they deal with you know uh, historical preservation uh they deal with, you know um things that we have for recreation when they come before them so just because you know they may say I like conservation, but there's other areas in town that this this um, that seat you know really affects. So they may be able to kind of branch out a little bit beyond conservation as well. So you know, as as someone who you know considers, I certainly consider myself someone who promotes the community integration of the conservation commission, and so this is something that does appeal to me. Um, but I'm not sure in a, a full time capacity. So. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing with our new members, and then um, maybe we can decide from there. Yeah, okay. I, I feel what you're saying, Chris. I think it's very interesting, and the white knight in me loves the idea of charging to the club, but I don't have the bandwidth, and I know it, so I, right. I, I <laughs> there. All right, so do you guys want to, like, just table this until, like, maybe um, early fall, so probably our September meeting? And that so way do, we it gets motion? do we need a motion for that, Ramonda? Uh, yep, you just need a motion to table it. I think John had something on his the tip of his tongue. Yeah, I make a motion that we table it until we get the rest of the members on board. Second. Okay. 
All right, go down the list again. Chris Capizio, your position? Uh, uh, yes, I. Peter Bamber? Aye. John Gear. Aye. Steve Washburn also votes aye. Okay. Uh, next up, it looks like we've got conservation agents report uh, with a few line items on it. So we'll hand that over to Ramonda. All right. So um, obviously uh, two of our members, Peter and John, uh, are aware of there was an issue at 556 five, Nickel Street, which is the Jane Center, um, where they did some cutting down. Um, they did a lot of tree work out in the front, but they also did a lot of tree work in the back uh, into the buffer zone. Uh, into the no disturb, basically onto town property, all the way out to the beach, the beyond the water's edge at Ellis Pond, because they created about three feet of depth of wood chips and logs that they created like a pathway um, out into the water. Um, the pond's a little low right now, so I think they thought they were going right to the edge, but they're basically had dumped wood chips into. Um, the pond area. So when the water does rise back up, those wood chips are going to go floating away. So, I mean, there's issues with, you know, illegal dumping per se, as far as, you know, putting it onto town property. Um, they've already been told to stop. Um, they are willing to work with us um, to get it uh, remediated. Um, they were just given some really, really bad advice by their landscaper, who's very eager to do a lot of the cutting back and dragging up tree chunks into the um, wetland area, but unfortunately, um, they dragged it onto property that wasn't even theirs. So what we need to do is uh, set an appointment to have them come in to talk about uh, a remedi remediation plan to get that cleaned up. Um, because it is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an impressive path they made, but it, it, you know, you can't do that. So um, I went out there on site the other day, took some more photos, um, and they said, you know, whenever we want them to have uh, have them come in, um, they want to come in as soon as possible to, to try to get the work cleaned up because they're not going to do anything else on the site until um, we get it resolved. So I was looking at the calendar just to give them time. Um, we have a meeting August 19th. So if you guys want to have them come out that day, we will include that information on the enforcement order that they know is coming their way. Um, and if you guys want to issue a levy a fine, you are more than welcome to. It's $300 a day until it's resolved, but that seems very steep, um, especially for people who are willing to work with us, but it's really up to you guys. I would accept the date, and I, I personally have no interest in issuing a fine. There seem to be very nice people who had no idea, and frankly, their uh, landscape gentlemen should have known and then told them if he works in the state of Massachusetts, he should have known. So it's surprising that he uh, missed, did not know or didn't inform them. Yeah, um, I have a few things to say on this one. First, I'd just like to say a big thank you to John and Peter both. The uh, immediate response that occurred there, and even though this is my my first reply to it, the text messages with images and things were incredibly informative and helpful. And it's just the type of like response I would hope to see from commissioners that that was a big deal to me that was very impressive and I thank you guys both for that um, I was blown away by the level of impact quite frankly and obviously I, I uh, haven't had any direct communication with them but my takeaway from uh, what's been shared by Peter um, is that they you know seem entirely ignorant to what had occurred it doesn't mean that they're not liable for what occurred but uh, I, I, I feel the same way. I'm not really interested in like arbitrarily finding or unnecessarily finding someone. It, they seem ultimately motivated and inspired to work to resolve the issue and correct what they've done. I do wonder uh, about the time sensitivity of some of the fill material that was placed in the footprint of, of the waterway, right? Because uh, where's that going to go and what kind of what kind of issue is that going to cause, if any? But um, yeah, just I guess I just really wanted to to say thank you um, to the two of you and just share some of my thoughts surrounding all that. So um, I just want to say a couple of things about it. Um, number one, uh, Peter went up there and then I went up there and uh, like Peter said, there was no malice. Um, it was out of ignorance basically. And I assured them that the commission was going to work with them. 
that we're not um, we're not in business to beat people up. Right. And uh, um, I agree with Peter that I don't see personally see the need for a fine because unfortunately they're going to need every penny they've got to uh, put it towards remediation, and that's the most important thing. So um, I actually look forward to working with them, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, Hopefully, before our next meeting, we'll have the agent, a new agent on board, and they can look it over too and, uh, okay. you know, go from there. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think that's a stance that we need to take. Um, I definitely am interested in the timeline on remediation. I think, you know, even though, even if we're, we all agree that a fine is not necessary, we should have a pretty good idea of the timeline that we're working with to resolve the problem. So. Um, as soon as you get that information from their agent, then I think it's necessary to move forward with efforts. Yeah, but there's yeah. one other thing we have to be mindful of too, is um, which I had probably told them they'll have to do is uh, there'll have to be some sort of a plan as to how they're going to remove the material they put there without further doing any damage. Right. So right. they'll probably have some have to have something in writing, and I would. I would guess that that would require either some guidance from uh, our agent or um, possibly they might have to hire somebody, but that would be up to the agent to determine that. I, I think they're going to need to hire somebody because they're not going to be able to, they, they were asking when I was on site if they can bring in some heavy equipment to go in there and scoop the stuff out. No, they, they they need to hire somebody professionally to minimize the impact. So, yeah, we don't want them chewing up the roots of the trees that are there. Oh, and I said, you know, trying to get the stuff out by hand. Yeah, whatever whatever makes the most sense. Reminder: Will we have a new agent by that time? Uh oh, you've disappeared. <laughs> I heard her connection coming in and out. I know, and it says uh, no sound, no sound on her. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so she's coming back. There we go. Is that? Um, I, I, will we have an agent by the next meeting? Do you know? I don't know. Um, Right now, well, I mean, it's usually um, when someone. Sorry, they usually give about a month notice to their employer. So yeah. I don't really see the person starting at least before the end of August, the beginning of September. Um, right now. Okay. So. Um, he's going to work with them as well. So that's why I said they're probably going to have to hire somebody um, to basically try to do, do all the legwork for them um, to get this and put a plan in place. Sounds good. All right, I keep losing my audio. Um, they are aware that it's going to be a lot of work for them, and it is going to be very expensive to get it fixed. Um, I mean, they, they paid a lot for the work that they had. There we go. All right, but yeah, so no, but I doubt we'll have an agent in time to, to deal with this in, in the beginning anyway. All right, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, Mr. Halkiotis and our team will do our best to work with them and see see them through this. I, I agree with the sentiment being presented that we're not looking to hold anyone over the fires and find them, uh, you know, for no good reason, really. I, I think if they want to work with us, it, they probably need all the resources they have to, to get someone on board to help guide the process. So, um, okay. Is, is that what we have on that one, Ramonda? Yep. So, you, you just have to vote on uh, having them come in on August 18th and I'll make that motion that we uh, invite them in for the 19th. Okay. At 7.30? Uh, no, we already have something else. 7.45. Okay.
So the 18th at 7.45. Okay. Did I have a second motion on that motion? Was it John made the motion, Peter seconded? Okay. <laughs> You're right, Steve, I forgot. <laughs> Peter. Uh, down the list, Chris Capizio. Yeah, I'm in favor. Yeah, I'm in favor. So, so am I. Is the date uh, accurate, Ramonda? John Gay? Yeah. I'm um, um, yes. And Steve Washburn is also yes. Okay. All right. So August 19th at 7.40 p.m. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear okay? It just keeps cutting in and out on me. Yeah. Something odd happens where I see the audio icon next to your name cycle from green microphone to white X to red microphone back to green, and I lose you during that process. And, and there's a funny squeaking sound. Yeah. <laughs> Audio seems good now. Um, I love it. What do we have next, Amanda? Okay. Um, so the next thing is, so for 1077 Pleasant Street, which is Certainty, uh, they are on their next phase of remediation. As we all know, uh, they were um, fined by the EPA and they had to do some cleanup. They already started to clean up in the river area, but now this is on another area of the site where they're going to do some asbestos remediation. So um, they had filed for a modification to the plan that they submitted to DEP and it was approved. And then they've also recently submitted the NOI, which you guys are going to probably get in the mail in the next couple of days um, to file for the full um, cleanup of the asbestos. So this is just coming forward. It's going to be a lot of work, but they are moving forward. We're trying to get that site cleaned up. So that was more just of an update. Oh, I skipped one. Sorry. So did you guys have a yeah, do you guys have any comments on that one or no? Okay. All right. And the one I skipped was the Eagle Scout project. So Adam Gorin, uh, he is a life scout now, and he's trying to raise up to be an Eagle Scout. Um, and this project started about a year ago, but it's been on hold. It obviously, when COVID hit, everything kind of um, I met him out there with Joe Greeley and also Chris Hirsch from the uh, Neponset River Watershed, because that area is where they're going to reroute. They're going to take the dam away. That's where they want to take the dam away and reroute it. So his project was kind of impacted by that. So we all went out there, kind of put our heads collectively together to say, you know, how can we make this go forward for him without, you know, it impacting what the Neponset River watershed wanted to do because we didn't want them to just come behind him and just kind of basically wipe everything away that he did um, as far as his project. So I sent you guys a map. And if you see from the highlighted area, um, the two areas that are highlighted, that's where the staging area is going to be for uh, the watershed's equipment. Um, and what they decided to do is they're going to take down some trees in that area in order to get the equipment in. Um, but that area where the staging is going to be is going to remain um, like a stone dust path. So they were hoping to put two picnic tables there. Um, we're going to have, we want to have the trail cleaned up uh, and also a picnic table put on the end. So he was hoping to get the commission's um, assistance with getting the picnic tables and the benches. And he's going to go out there, you know, open up the, the pathway to the trail and try to clean it up to make it look more nicer. Um, I mean, it definitely needs some work right now. Um, it's really overgrown and just not in a good way. So he would finish off that project, make sure it's all done, put up the signage and everything like that. So he just wanted to know if you guys would be willing to lend that assistance of getting on the picnic table and the benches and things like that. Very good. I, you know, very I, I believe we, we had talked to them and it still may be happening that for the trails committee that there would be a trail running uh below th that area too maybe they and maybe in when the plan because they're not final 
maybe they'll be able to connect those two areas, but that's, you know, hypothetical at best. Yeah, I, I'm just very happy that in the face of the potential adversity that exists with this, trying to coexist with the dredging and restoration uh, of travel, that everyone kind of got together and met to uh, come to terms with a situation that everything could proceed as planned. And that's that's really cool to me. I like that and I appreciate that. Um, in regards to helping fund a picnic table or two, I, my opinion is that that's a, you know, a good plan and something that we should support and be involved in, but I, I would love to hear from the rest of you. I, I agree. Great. Go ahead. No, I just said, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, similarly, I'd love to be involved. I'm all for it as well. All right, awesome. So you guys I have to claim ignorance regarding what the amount of All right, so you guys just have to make a motion on a last. We lost you. Yeah, but you, do we need to make a motion? We need. I'll make a Sorry, motion can... to provide support them uh, with picnic tables and benches. I'll second uh, that. Oh, and a sign. And a sign. Uh, Stephen, did you want a um <laughs> a, a financial estimate before we? move forward with the motion or no i think we're okay I, I was thinking it might be necessary as part of the motion but peter handed it eloquently <laughs> okay all right uh okay. so we have the table signs motion from peter seconded by john correct mm -hmm. all right we'll go down our list then uh chris Kavizia, what's your position aye peter bamber aye. Yeah. Hi. Steve Washburn is also in support. Okay. And lastly, we just have some minor business. I sent you guys the minutes. Um, the way the office has been run previously, we want to move away from that. Um, we want to be more in line with how the ZBA and planning are run. Um, and with the new agent coming on, basically, basically and Al's position so there isn't that extra step in between so they're going to have to bring a lot of things to you um, so as you can see I reformatted um, you know our agendas and we're just going to do a lot of um, just nothing too drastic but just changing some way in the process that the commission has run um, because it, it not to say it was wrong, but I prefer that it would be more in line with how the other two boards in the department have been handling things and how they uh, things are presented and things like that. So um, hopefully this is something that you guys are okay with and we'll move forward. Um, but if not, you know, we can go back to the old way, but it's really up to you guys. I guess I'm feeling a little bit like beyond the changing in format to the agenda more specifically what changes we're talking about um so there are some other changes that are going to come forward so we are moving to um e-filing for dep forms so a lot of the stuff that's done um, i would say by hand but handwritten out um, we're not going to be doing that anymore um, so we also are doing the online permitting for the town which is converting over right now actually was with a training earlier today. So this whole implementation of online permitting for the town is gonna to take about a year. We're just in the beginning stages of building up, I guess, the modules uh, for the software, how people, you know, you know, click and, and find things and submit permits and stuff like that. So I think this would be a good time to kind of bring the commission up to the 21st century on how things are done. And like I said, the e-filing for DEP is, is much easier, much more streamlined. Um, like I said, and just some of the other, like, you know, basic office stuff, we just want to kind of have it more cohesive with the entire department because it would yeah, just be easier. Great. Yeah. If someone like goes on vacation for them kind of just pick up and say, I don't have to do it your way. It's just the way. So. I'm all about modernizing uh, processes and standardizing processes so that there's a uniformity. Yeah, I love this. It sounds great. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Oh, I think it sounds good, but I might point out, Steve, she was looking at me when she said bring conservation up to the 21st century. Funny. <laughs>
No argument here. Is that what we have um, for minutes and other business, Ramonda? Yep, so you guys just have to vote on accepting the minutes unless you guys want some changes to it, and that's it. Do I have a motion? Make the motion to accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor, Chris Capizia. Aye. Peter Bamber. Aye. John Gere. Aye. Steve Washburn is also in favor. Do I have another motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Is in favor. Chris Capizia. Aye. Peter Bamber. Aye. John Gere. Steve Washburn is also in favor. Thank you so much for tonight. This was a pleasant meeting.